Good afternoon. Um, here we are today. We're in the workshop. Um, we've just pulled the little Fiesta ST in, uh, our little demo car, if you like. Um, as you'll have seen in some of our other videos, this is uh, fitted with our 2.5 four cylinder Duratec engine, a uh, set of individual throttle bodies, and uh, ME221 ECU. Um, we've been doing quite a lot of work on this. Uh, we've taken the head off, put a set of cams in it. We've uh, had the head ported by AL Developments, uh, Andrew Lindley. Uh, he's done a cracking job on that. Uh, we've got a set of stage two Esslinger cams in it now. A set of Vibratec engine mounts to address the rather horrendous engine movement that we saw on the dyno last time. Um, and it, uh, it really is a cracking little engine now. Uh, it's done 244 horsepower um, and it really does yeah, go great. But today, um, the plan is that I'm going to go through the fully plug and play Duratec loom that uh, we've developed alongside Motorsport Electronics. Uh, so this is a fully terminated loom specifically for the Duratec. It's a little bit of a step up from their other looms which are also very nice but this is uh, sort of one step up. It's got um, a nice little relay block built into it which the other looms don't have. Uh, obviously it's all labelled. Uh, it's twisted wires as well so um, that should aid with uh, any electrical noise issues that we might have. And so what we're going to do is replace the old, this, this car was put on uh, ME221 many years ago before any of the um, pre-terminated looms were available. So um, it used a wiring loom. As you can see down there, we've got a lot of bunched up individual wires that I never did anything with. Um, and we had to do obviously all the terminations on the loom ourselves. So it was, um, it was okay at the time, uh, not a bad job, but... Um, Things have moved on a bit. We've got this specific Duratec loom, so um, I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity to go through the, the connections. And um, this sort of applies to any of our individual throttle body kits, really, regardless whether it's ST170, or Z-Tech, Duratec. It's all the same connections that we're concerned with. Um, but I'll just go through how simple it is, really, and uh, there's not that much to it. So um, ECU is in the footwell of the car. So first thing I'm going to have to do is pull out the old loom, pull it back through the bulkhead uh, and then get started on, uh, on fitting the new one. So uh, yeah, let's get going. So I've got the loom all spread out here, I'll just go through the main connections and give you an idea of, um, of what's involved on a typical individual throttle body kit. Uh, it's fairly much the same as any other normally aspirated engine really. Uh, we'll start with the crank sensor, okay, so that's obviously a specific plug now for the Duratec. Uh, in the case of the Fiesta, I'm actually going to take that plug off um, because I spliced into the original car wiring loom, which means that the standard dash will still run, the standard ECU can still see a crank sensor. So that plug will need to come off and I will need to splice that into the car loom. Obviously normally you wouldn't do that, that would just go straight onto your crank sensor. Uh, next up we've got throttle position sensor, self-explanatory, um, three wires, standard um, three pin Bosch style plug. Um, for any of your standard sort of sensors that might be on a set of Gemvies or our throttle bodies or whatever else. Uh, four injector plugs, all labelled up. Everything's labelled of course, so nice and easy to follow. Uh, we've got four injectors in a separate loom there. Uh, we've got coolant temperature, okay, two pin mini timer plug again. That's, uh, that fits the standard sensor that we would supply with this ECU. Um, we've got the um, Cam sensor, okay, specific to the Duratec again, okay, so that's the, the, the plug for the Duratec cam sensor. And the VVT solenoid, again, that is specific to the 2.5 um, Duratec Ford um, cam solenoid, so I'll take care of that so we can run the VVT. Uh, somewhere is the air temperature as well. Um, not quite found it yet. There's the um, the coil pack. Okay, that's the standard focus style coil pack we've opted for on this. So, okay, so the Duratec may come with the little square uh, style plug um, coil pack, but we've opted for the more universal and more readily used uh, focus style coil pack. So, if we are using one of these looms, it does need that either that or this plug will need to come off and have the smaller uh, Duratec style plug put on there. Um, then we've got a load of auxiliaries, okay, so you may or may not need to use those, uh, inputs and outputs. And of course, Lambda, this car's running um, Innovate um, wideband, so uh, we will need to connect that up. Self-explanatory, single wire, it's just a 5 volt, not 5 volt in. 
So, um, just looking at the uh, the crank sensor, uh, anybody interested in doing this on a, on a standard Fiesta, uh, this is where we originally spliced into into the loom. So as it comes over the uh, over the rock cover there, just after that plug, we've got a red, um, sorry, a white with a red stripe, um, standard car wiring, and a brown with a red stripe, um, and we've basically just spliced into those two. So the the brown with the red stripe is going to the white of the ME221 and the um, the white with the red stripe is going to the blue of the ME221 and uh, so that's just a little note there for anybody interested in doing this that means that obviously splicing into that loom means that the standard taco still works um, and the standard ECU still works so that can still run the fuel pump if you want uh, and obviously it's seen engine RPM uh, rather than uh, unplugging the crank sensor and losing all that functionality Okay, so I've managed to get pretty much everything connected now. i uh, managed to strip the old loom out, you can see it there, it's all dangling down. I've yet to pull it back through the bulkhead. Um, we've got the new loom in place here. I've uh, fed it through a, a large grommet at the back there that's already got the original car loom passing through it. Now I've got a bit of tidying up to do there, obviously. Um, but yeah, everything's roughly in place. So we've got injectors 1, 2, 3, 4 plugged in. I've spliced the crank sensor into the original wiring loom, as I mentioned previously. Uh, coil pack we can't see because it's underneath here, um, underneath the throttle bodies. We've got that positioned at the front of the block, so it's nice and tidy with the ignition leads coming up through the middle. Um, we've got the coolant temperature sensor, um, that's plugged in, straight plugged in. That's our little uh, top hose adapter that we use on our conversions, so it keeps it nice and simple. You're not having to re-tap anything in the block or the head. It's just like a, an extra standalone sensor. Uh, we've got the inlet air temperature sensor there. Um, then we've got the cam sensor, and of course the uh, VVT solenoid all plugged in. Everything working. Um, I think the only thing I've not done, so I've run the the one that's labelled battery live obviously is straight off the battery okay so that runs to the relay that is built into the loom uh, so the relay takes care of that uh, we've got the earths to the battery and then I've run the ignition live that is labelled ignition live I've run that with along with all the rest of the auxiliaries back into the cockpit for the time being because um, if you're using those auxiliaries they're likely going to be powering relays which are obviously inside the car on this so They'll all be tidied up, we'll get some uh, sleeving on that and that sort of thing. But like I say, everything's passed back into the car. If we come around this side, I've had a start and it's all working. So the ECU is just hanging down there. Like I say, there are all the auxiliaries waiting to be connected. I think the only one I've got on this car is the is the fan, I believe, and of course the uh, the wide band as well. The wide band's currently it's reading obviously, but it's not wired back into the ECU yet, so I've just got that to reconnect. Um, so, a uh, quick start. Got the mighty software loaded there. So, as I say, that wideband reading is not correct at the moment because the uh, the wideband's not being wired into the ECU. But um, crucially, we've got coolant temperature showing 36 degrees. We've got the inlet air temperature at 13 degrees. Um, VVT is currently working. Um, so we've got target advance of zero in those cells. And steadily increasing targeting the um, the uh, required advance so yeah everything's working so um, we'll tidy everything up and we'll do a bit more okay so we've done a little bit more I've tidied the loom up um, put a bit of sleeving around it all a bit of a conduit um, secured a few things just to get it all up and running um, so next job will be to test it um, get it out on the road make sure it's all good uh, so just to go over that loom one more time, just to show you how simple these looms are and exactly what you need for individual throttle bodies, regardless of whether it's a Duratec, regardless of whether it's an ST170 Z-Tech or any other. Uh, the basic connections are the crank sensor, okay, that's spliced into the loom here, but it would normally go down to the crank sensor. We've got a throttle position sensor uh, on the end of the throttle bodies or carburetors. Um, we have a coolant temperature sensor 
and we have an air temperature sensor. Okay, they are the bare minimum inputs that uh, this system needs to get up and running. Um, the basic outputs are the four injectors, uh, the coil pack, which is obviously underneath on this engine, um, and then obviously uh, a battery live, an earth, and an ignition live um, for the uh, power supply. Uh, oh, and of course, uh, two more inputs. We've got the uh, cam solenoid and uh, so cam sensor and the um, cam solenoid as an output. Okay, if we've got VVT, uh, if we don't have VVT on the engine, then we don't strictly need either of those. We can just run in uh, grouped fuel in mode, uh, make it even simpler. Um, but obviously, having the VVT, we need those sensors there. So um, all good. Uh, as I say, uh, we've got everything connected now. I've used one of the auxiliary outputs um, for the fan. So the engine fan runs off the ECU. Um, and then we've got the wideband plumbed in now. And just a couple of notes on uh, on the ECU and the software itself. So as I say, we've got a wideband controller in this car. So um, that is now wired into the ECU and we can see that uh, we've got live lambda readings here and uh, we can obviously therefore switch on the closed loop use the long trim table should we wish uh, obviously the ECU will auto tune uh, in terms of the variable valve timing um, that's all connected now so as you can see we're not calling for any advance at the moment um, obviously start to rev it and we start to see the cam advancing uh, and that's that really so uh, yeah I'm going to do some testing on this uh, all being well uh, in a few days time once we've absolutely 100% verified this loom uh, it will be available so that's a full plug and play Durotech loom we'll be offering it alongside our 50mm throttle body kits for 2.5 as well as any of the other Durotech engines uh, so yeah watch this space and then also watch out for the latest video on this uh, engine on the dyno since we've put the new Esslinger stage 2 cams in and uh, the ALD ported head uh, that is really really interesting gives us some significant gains uh, again both those products will be available from our website very soon okay thanks for watching